Hey beautiful people, how are you all doing today? My name is Mark and I love making things sweet and in style. If you are new to my channel, please don't forget to subscribe, like, and share. And this is where I do anything and everything creative. And before we start, I would like to thank Sweets and Grinds for sending me this very beautiful sampler cakes. Okay, it's actually a lot. I'm very excited to try them out. So um, this is actually from Chef Nix Estrada. So she does a lot of classes on Ensaimada cakes and a lot more so you can check her page out. I'm going to put it on the description box below. I highly suggest you check her out. And then for today, I'm going to share with you a very, very easy technique on how to make an Icelandic poppy. It's actually a very nice flower that you can put on your floral arrangements and also on your cakes. And this is actually requested by one of my loyal subscribers, which is Krishni Chatire. So if you're watching, this is for you. I hope I pronounced your name right. And then um, without further ado, let's start. Okay, so for today, I'll be showing you how to make a very easy Icelandic poppy without using a specific cutter, as in no cutter at all. But if ever you would want to do it using a specific cutter, you can use the number 2 of the rose petal cutter, which is 2.5 cm in diameter by 3 cm. Okay, so for today, I'll show you how to make one without using any cutter. So I have here a paste. So what I'm using today is Mako paste. The recipe is already uploaded on my YouTube channel. You can check it out. I'm going to put it on the description box below also. Okay, so first you need to get a small ball around the size of 1.5 cm, okay? Only 1.5 cm, but you can go larger if you want. So I'm starting off with a 1.5 cm ball. And then what you want to do is gently knead and massage the ball so it's smooth. Okay, and then after that... You get cornstarch on your fingers and then gently you need to flat, okay? So when you're flatting this, you focus on the sides, okay? So just press, press, and press, and then gently you need to elongate it a little bit, okay? You see that? So because we're not using any cutter, the shapes will be not super duper the same, which is what we wanted because if you look at the real Icelandic poppy, the petals are not all the same, okay? So after that, because we want our petals to be thinner, you see I avoided the center because that's where we insert the wire, okay? By the way, for today, we will be using wire number 26. You can also use number 28. You have to use color white, okay? So after that, I'll be using my ball tool already to thin out the edges. Okay, so when you're thinning out, you have to look at the picture of the real flower. So we are aiming at a shape that is similar to the rose petal. Okay. So gently flat it with the ball tool. Okay. So some parts will not be all the same. Okay, see that? It's an even. That's how we wanted it. Okay. You want it to be really uneven just like the real flower. And then once you're satisfied with the thinness, this is what you'll get. You see that it's paper thin, but the center is thick. This is what we want. So you need to get your wire number 26, okay? And then um, you can loop, but for this one, I no longer loop. Insert it in the middle until half. Okay, and then gently press, pinch, press, pinch, press, and pinch. And then what I have here is a multi-vayner, but if you do have a vayner specifically for poppy you can use that okay so just add a little cornstarch and then put it here and then press okay after that you take it out so this is what you'll have see that so what you need to do now you put cornstarch on your palm okay not too much remove the excess put the petal here Dab some cornstarch and what I would want to do is actually focus on the end parts, okay? So I'm gonna put it slightly like that and then using my bamboo skewers or barbecue stick, I'm just gonna press, roll and roll onto the sides, okay? So what it does, it actually gives you that effect that is very similar. Sometimes it sticks, that's okay. It means that you're lacking cornstarch, okay? Okay. Don't worry about too much cornstarch because later we will remove it when we are dusting, okay? So, you see that? It creates that natural frills that we want. 
If you find it hard to do it this way, you can actually do it on your fingers. So put cornstarch on your fingers. Okay, not too much. And then put the end there. See that? And then what I will do now, again, press, turn. Okay, I press and turn it left and right. Press, turn, left and right. Press, turn, left and right. Press, turn, left and right. This is the similar technique that you do if you are making Cattleya flowers or lip of an orchid. Okay, so there you have it. You see that? It's a lot of frills, which is what we want. So what you want to do now, put it back again on the center of your palm using the smaller ball tool. Okay, so half of the ball is outside, half is inside. Gently press and then pull. Okay? You have to do this only on some parts, not all. Okay? So you'll have some parts that are actually cupped. And then you need to get a spoon. Okay? So lay it on your spoon, just like that. And then you press. Okay? So that it will get the shape just like so. Okay? And then you need to let this dry for about 10 to 15 minutes. If you're using Mako paste and you want it to dry fast, even if it's humid, um, you need to put it uh, in front of an electric fan, okay? And then it dries faster for about 10 minutes, okay? And then after that, we'll make the center. Okay, so now we'll make the center of our Icelandic poppy. So we need a ball, color green, okay? The size should be 1 centimeter, okay? So this is a 1 centimeter ball, color green. It's made of mako paste, so gently knead and massage, smoothen it out on your palm. And then what I have here is wire number 22. Okay, wire number 22. And then using your pliers, just make a loop at the end, okay? Just like that. And then after that, insert. Okay, and then lock. You can flat the top a little bit, but not too much, okay? So that should be the shape. After that, you need to get your pliers, I mean your tweezers, okay? So what you need to do, you need to pinch, okay? Just pinch, okay, that's one. Another one. And another one, okay? And another one. And another one. And the last one, okay? So this is what you'll have. It should look like that, okay? So it's as if that there's a star, See that? And then after that, you need to let this dry for a little bit. And now we'll work on with the stamens, okay, of the flower. So you need, uh, this is a cotton thread that is color yellow. So you need to position your hands like this, okay? So put the thread in the middle. Using your thumb, press it in, okay? And then just roll it. Okay, so with regards to the number of rolls, I don't really count, but if you're OC, it's around 100 rolls, okay? As long as you see that it's thick enough, it's okay. And don't forget to put your thumb in the middle because it plays a big role. Okay, so just keep on winding it up. Okay, just keep on winding and winding. Again, we're using a cotton thread, so the shade that I'm using is very light yellow. You can also go for off-white or beige, but you do have to dust it later on. So, anyways, we'll dust it later. So, you can actually use any color, but not dark. Okay? So, after that, this is a little bit thick. So, I'll cut. After you cut, you see the thumb is in the middle. So, you remove your thumb so that you can easily take it away. So, you need wire number 28 or thinner. Insert. Okay? Just like that, and then fold, and then you twist. Okay, and then you can take it out easily, just like that. And then you have another end. That's where you insert another wire, number 28. You can also use 30 or thinner. Okay, and then just twist. Okay? And then after ha that, you'll have this. So with just one loop, you can actually create two stamens already for two flowers and then you have to cut this in the middle okay so this is what you'll have and then you need to get your floral tape okay and then expand to activate the stickiness so you fold it all the way up 
Okay, so we need to wrap it at this level, the middle. Okay, not lower, not higher, but in the middle. So just press, pinch, and twist, pinch, twist, pinch, twist. Okay, and then continue wrapping until everything is wrapped. Okay, and then using your fingers, or if you have a bamboo skewers, you just need to arrange it so that it's very open. Okay, and then when you're using a bamboo skewers, what happens is, if there are some strings that are actually way too long, it shows up. So if you're OC, you can actually cut that. But if not, you can just leave it like that. Okay, so it, it should be like so. And then after that, we'll spray this with water and then we'll dip this in our gelatin powder. Similar to what we do with our other flowers. Okay. So I'm just gonna spray this with water so it's gonna be wet. So I have here a container where I can spray some water. Actually, this one is uh, water with color yellow already so that you can color the threads. Let's say, for example, you're using white. So, yeah, it should be like so. After that, this is my gelatin mix with uh, yellow petal dust. So, I'll just dip the ends, okay, so that you can mimic the actual pollens of the flower. Okay, and then this is what you should have. See that? It won't focus. Hello? Okay, see that? That's how pretty it should be. And then after this, you need to let it dry for a little bit before you actually add the center. So this is the center that we made earlier. So what you need to do now, just using water and an ordinary brush, you just need to wet the surface that is actually embossed, okay? Only the surface that is embossed. That's the only thing that you have to wet. And then again, using your gelatin mix, just dip it. Okay, and then this is what you should have. Okay, and then after that, we let this dry for a little bit. Okay, and then get your floral tape. Expand to activate the stickiness. And then insert it right at the center. Okay, so when you insert it at the center, normally it will come out in some parts. That's normal. Okay, you see that? It comes out on one part, so you just have to continue on pushing it through. Okay, until you have it in the center, just like that. Okay, and then using your tape, you need to just put it on place, okay? Just continue wrap, wrapping it over, just like that. And then using your bamboo skewers, you just arrange some of the stamens, okay? So that's your center. Okay, so after 10, roughly around 10 to 15 minutes, all the petals are actually dry. It's very humid in my place, so that's why I'm using Mako paste. Um, again, it's on the description box below if you would want to check the recipe out. Okay, so my petals are actually dry. So right now, we'll go on with the dusting, okay? So for the dust, I'm using rainbow dust. This is poppy red, or you can also use cherry red. And then I diluted it in a little bit of cornstarch, so it's gonna be light. So what you want to do first, you need to get the same brush color as the paste that you used, okay? So the very first thing that you do, since this is yellow, I'll use my yellow brush. Just remove all the cornstarch on the petals, okay? Because it's important to remove the cornstarch so it would be clean. After that, we use this red brush, okay, for the specific color. So you just need to dust a little bit of that red onto the middle part or the lower part so it would give you that orange glow okay because yellow plus red is actually orange so even if you dust it with little red what's gonna appear is like an orange glow you see that and then on some ends just add some some of that red dust okay so we add a spike of color okay, so just like that. So it's important that you actually diffuse or dilute your dust with a little bit of cornstarch because if you use the color that's directly on your petals, it's gonna be too intense, okay? So it's hard to control pigments if 
you're using it very dark so it's much better to start lighter and then you go darker little by little okay so right now we are done with our petals so i'll show you how to assemble so you move this on the side so we have here four petals by the way i forgot to mention for icelandic poppy it has four to five petals but normally it's four okay and then when you're flatting the petals it should be wider okay it should not be longer but wider that's why if you observe my petals it's all wide okay so i get my floral tape okay expand to activate the stickiness and then after that get your center okay you see that it's very pretty so we get one petal first normally the first one that you get is the one that is super cup okay so you observe all your petals they're all different okay there's a lot of movement this one is very cup like that so you get this one first you bend okay and then insert at the bottom it should be at the same level okay just like that and then using your floral tape this is what you'll use to actually wrap it in just like a thread okay so you have one petal and then you get an another one Okay, just a little bit overlapping. See that? Then wrap. Get another one. Okay, see that? Then wrap. And then you get the last one. So I created four petals only, but as I've said, you can create four to five because uh, the flower actually has four to five petals. Okay, so you see that? So that's what you should have. And then wrap it in. And then of course, you need to continue wrapping it until the very end. And then get another floral tape. Okay, and then expand to activate the stickiness. You need to cover this completely so that it will be very clean looking. Okay? So that no wires will be exposed. Okay, just like so. You see that? And then now you arrange the petals of your flower, you can actually move it a little bit based on your desired look. Okay, so there you have it. This is my very beautiful Icelandic poppy. See that? It's very, very pretty. There's a lot of movements going on. Again, you can make it five petals, but I prefer to only use four. Okay. So you can also add more details if you wanted to. So there you have it. It's so pretty. Um, there's actually a lot of different colors of Icelandic poppy. So this is the common one, which is yellowish orange. There is a very, very bright orange one. There's white. There's also red. So for today, we made the yellowish orange. You see that? It's very pretty. So I hope you learned a lot. If you find this video helpful, please do give it a thumbs up and please don't forget to subscribe like and share okay thank you bye